welcome to the Boxing Life Podcast. If you're a regular listener, welcome back. On this episode, I'm going solo. This is the first time in a long time I've done this. I talk about all sorts from mental health to kids, how I think they should be learning in school, about being bullied, about the tattoo that I regret that's on my shoulder, about getting old, about the crazy stuff me and Glenn do when we've had a few drinks to try and help us become better podcasters. Also, I talk about all sorts of stuff on here about working hard on my wife, worked hard to get to where she's got to right now. And I answer some questions as well. I did a little post on Instagram and I've got a few questions, so I answer some questions as well. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this episode. Please leave me a review on iTunes, SoundCloud, or wherever you listen to this, and subscribe. If you subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, that means every week when I upload one, you'll get a notification, so you'll not miss one. Anyway, here it is, the Boxing Life Podcast with me, Tony Jeffries. Enjoy. This is the first time I've done an episode solo for a very, very long time. I've always had, well, for, for a long time, I've always had Glenn on or Kev or a guest so yeah doing it doing it solo for a very long time Glenn's out of town now Kev's out of town and um, I just wanted to make sure I keep consistent with these shows and <clears throat> if you're a regular listener now you know what I do each week I'll do one week I'll do on boxing and the next week I'll do on life last week was about boxing this week is uh, all on life and what's been happening about my life about life in general about getting old about getting drunk about about everything um so, I mean, my life now is going very well. I'm sure if you listen to this, you follow me on social media and you, and you see that it's going very well from the, from the outside. But now it seems like it's going well from the inside as well. I know there's a lot of people post stuff on their social medias or, or wherever, and everyone looks like they're, they're doing great in life, which if you really find out more about them, the, most of the times... They're not. I think. I think everyone's got problems. I think everyone goes through hard times, um, and I know I, I definitely have in the past, and uh, sometimes I, I even do now. But yeah, life is good. Life is good. I've just getting back from the Elliot Science Museum with uh, my wife, wife, kids, nephew, and uh, my friend and his daughter, and it was great. It was great to go there. And if you're ever in LA, I recommend you go there. It's free. I was really surprised that it is. It's free, and you get loads of. Um, stuff and it's a it's an amazing museum and one I, I think they'll make the money from um if they make the money from the parking you'll pay 12 dollars parking and then if you want to buy food that's not cheap either and outside of the museum they've got a a big uh, a rose garden a beautiful rose garden and went out there with the kids and it was red hot and one thing that i'm um I'm worried about with having kids, and if you've got kids, you'll know about this, is your kids getting sunburnt or your kids, um, well, with my kids, it's, it's getting their freckles because when you're in the sun, your freckles come out and they've got a few freckles on the face. And the reason why this bothers me a bit, and my wife always tells us it shouldn't bother us, and I understand that it shouldn't bother us, is, is that when I was a kid, I had freckles on my face, on my body, and I used to get picked on about it and... So now I'm, I'm really self-conscious of that, and I never really want to, my kids to go through that. Obviously, no one wants their kids to go through getting bullied and, and picked on. And for, for me, that would be a nightmare, I think, that they're getting picked on for the freckles or for whatever reason it may be. And I, I really dislike bullies. Uh, you notice I use the word dislike and not hate. And the reason for that is that I've taken that word out of my vocabulary completely the word hate. Um, reason being, it's uh, obviously it's, it's a negative, um, very negative word, and I, obviously I, I like to be positive all the time. And I was reading something the other day about uh, words that you should take out your vocabulary, and hate was definitely one, but I never took it out because of that reason. I took it out because, uh, because you hear that word used all the time, and I think it's an overused word. Oh, I hate it when it's, the weather's like this, or oh, I hate it when this, I hate it when that. I think when you're using that word all the time, you just putting negative vibes out there and, and uh, unconsciously uh, not unconsciously what's the word? Uh, I can't think of the word but yeah but you're putting these words uh, subconsciously in, in, yeah, in, your, in your mind and in your, which is sending these vibes out so I'll keep that word out of my vocabulary and I think you should try it too as well and if you think about it there's not that much that I really 
really do hate. And another thing that I'm, and I'm drifting off the subject here about my kids, but another thing that I really believe is um, if you hate something, uh, it, it's, it's your fault. Like, if you've got a problem with something, you've got a problem, you know? And if someone's like, oh, I've got a problem with this guy, yeah, well, you've got a problem with that guy. It's not that guy's problem. It's, it's, it's your problem. Um, it's your fault, you know? You, you need to control your mind. So if I ever think about someone who I might dislike or I might, which is there's very little people who I, I really dislike uh, in, in, in my world, I think, um, no, I, I don't hate them. If I've got a problem with them, it's my problem, and, you know, I, I need to figure that shit out myself. Anyway, back to the, the bullies where, yeah, I think... Uh, Bullies is pieces of shit. I'll keep that word in the vocabulary. Uh, and the way that I dealt with bullies is by fighting them. And I remember when I was I was like 10 years old and I, I used to come home from school, I'd tell my mama and my dad that I'd been getting bullied. They'd been calling us freckly face, speckly, and like a freckly egg. All these words, I hate it now thinking about them. I've just used the word hate. Did you see that? Did you see that? No. I'm trying to get that shit out of my vocabulary, but when I'm talking about bullies and me going through this horrible moment in my life, you know, it, it popped back in. So, uh, yeah, they sent me to school. I said, right, all right, you're going to go to school today, and when you go to school, you're going to punch the bully as hard as you can in the face. And I was like, I'm not. I'm not. I was so scared, so, so scared about that. And But they were made us, like, you definitely are. You've got to, after school, going to see him. So I did that. I'm talking about I'm like 10, 11 years old. So I come out of school, seen the bully there, went over him and punched him as hard as I could in the face and bust his nose. And you know what? I never got bullied ever again. So is that the answer for bullying? You know what? I, I don't know. I, I don't think it is. It would work for me, but I, I don't know if it would work for everyone. Maybe it would, maybe not. I, I don't know if it's the answer. See, and the thing what I would be afraid of now with my kids if they go to school and they got bullied and seen to them, go and punch the bully in the face as hard as you can. I don't know how, how it might work, especially over here in America, you hear about guns and all the time and, and all that. And I would be so scared that some other people would jump in and, and beat them up and they'd get, and that, that, shit, that shit does my head in. So, you know, I try to, try to uh, I don't know what I would do. I don't know what I would do, but, uh, it worked for me and maybe it does work for you and, and at, the, at the time I'd started boxing as well so I was 10 years old 11 years old and I'd started boxing and boxing really helped with the punch that I hit the bully with and uh, another good thing about boxing is it really helps with your, with your confidence and so that's something that I'm 100% going to get my daughters in, into is, is boxing and I recommend you get your kids into it I recommend you get into boxing as well because it does give you this uh, this, this confidence that you get because you know that if anything ever does happen, you know how to throw the throw a punch. Uh, so yeah, I would highly recommend you get into boxing. Everyone should be in doing boxing, even if it's not just for self-defense, but for fitness and for for your for your mind. You know, it's kind of like a form of meditation when you are boxing because when you're doing it, there's that much to think about that um, you you can't really think about much else. So if you have got problems going on at home. Or, or wherever, um, when you when you do the boxing, you you kind of forget about it. I was just talking to someone the other day, or it might have been was it t today about how things to do to to help your mind. And a big thing for me is cold showers. I've spoken about it before. I've put videos on my YouTube page about cold showers, the benefits of it. So I really uh, recommend you go to my YouTube page. It's Jaffa Boxer on YouTube. This is where this video is, and, and by the way, if you're watching the video on YouTube and I've got my shirt off, the reason I've got my shirt off is because it's red on here, and the reason I keep looking at my phone is I want to turn it around now, and if you can see that, it's got the camera on it, so I don't want it to keep going out of focus, which it just was, I've just fixed it. Yeah, so that's my my take on, on that and bullying and kids, you know. Uh, so we had a great time at the museum. It was, it was very good. And tonight we're going out to celebrate. We're celebrating my, my wife's promotion at work. And, you know, if it, talking about hard work, and obviously when I went to the Olympics and got to the Olympics and was a professional boxer, hard work. But, you know, my wife's just showed me that 
how hard she works. So she's, we came, when we came to America back in 2012, she was a nurse in Sunderland Hospital in the northeast of England. And we moved over here and she thought, we, we thought that she was going to get a job in the American hospital uh, straight away. But we found out when we got here that she had to pass an exam called the NCLEX. And this NCLEX exam is very, very difficult. So she was studying for that for, I think it was something like eight, eight months before she could take the test. She took the test. She failed the test the first time. But in the meantime, while she was waiting to do this test to become a nurse, to continue doing what she'd been doing, an emergency room nurse, she needed to get work. I wasn't fighting anymore. I had bad hands. I couldn't really bring in much income, even though I had some from other investments or some saved up. Um, so she needed to bring in some, uh, some coin. So she was applying for jobs, and she applied for every single job you could think of. She actually worked for a woman in somewhere in Beverly Hills as an assistant, and this woman was a piece of shit. She taught her like like shit, you know. And you see, you see this now in LA. When where I'm from, you don't see this, but like so, we don't even see people having an assistant where I'm from. But here in LA, it's kind of like a a regular thing. Everyone has an assistant, even I've got one now. And, but, but like this was a different level. This woman was a some rich, rich bitch in in Beverly Hills, and yeah, she she used to say stuff like to my wife, like pass my cigarettes when they were like next to her and, and stuff like that. And I remember one day she, my wife came home and she was upset, crying. Like I hate this woman. She said the word hate. I hate this woman. I hate uh, the 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 way, the way she's treating me and all that. I went, that's making me sad. And I went, all right, you're not going back. Uh, you, you, you're not and she went well I need, I need the money and I was like no we never moved to America for us to be sad and uh, unhappy so she, she left that job and then she applied for another one she was a, a sushi uh, hostess and she anyway she had three jobs at a time and then she done the test again after a year passed the test got a job in the hospital then she when she was in the hospital she studied for a year to get a she, she started studying again for another year to get a bachelor's. She'd done that. Uh, she got through that. And in the meantime, she got pregnant. We had a kid. Then after she passed the bachelor's and we had our first kid, uh, she got pregnant again. Then she started studying for her master's in nursing. It's a three-year course. In them three years, she was working full-time. She had another two kids in three years, which, while studying, while working full-time, and while having big baby like me to look after and uh, having me with my crazy mind wanting to work all hours of the day and all hours of the night you know? so uh, she had that to deal with as well so then she she actually passed the batch, the, the masters in nursing uh, and we got the results last, last week so yeah we're going to celebrate her her success and hard work and you know she doesn't do it. You know what it is? Nurses is a different breed, mate. I'm telling you, nurses are a different breed. Not, I, obviously, I, it's my wife and I'll big my wife up, but these other nurses that I see are doctors. They're unbelievable. The, the work that they do, it takes a special sort of person to be a nurse. Could you cut clothes off a, off a smelly homeless man who shit himself and you got to wash his arse and wash his balls at the same time when he's talking to you like shit you've got to control him to make sure he's he, he's nice and, and calm him down when, he, when he's speaking like a piece of shit could could you, you do that no like I bet you 99.9% .9 of the public couldn't do that but these nurses do it and they've got to do it and they do it every single day and you know what they don't even complain about it you know so nurses is like the, the backbone of the community of, of the world I think um, so yeah she she, she's great, so we're going to celebrate that tonight. And I told her, like, when we go out, I want to get a tattoo. There's a place in Hollywood called Shamrock's Tattoo, and the guy called Boo Boo, he's just actually done... Whose tattoo was it? It was someone ridiculously famous. He's done, he's done David Beckham's. He's done loads of them. Yeah, I've got one of my tattoos done from before, and it's like a, 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 a place where it's, it's kind of like old school get old type of thing you go in there they give you beers and you have walks in you wait you walk ins and you wait and then you get tattooed and it works really good so I'm thinking about going there at night and getting some new ink you know I've got this one on my arm if you've seen if you're looking on the on the 
video now on YouTube, you see I've got the queen with the, with the flag and all that. And, um, something that I, when I went to get this tattoo, I get asked all the time about it. People always tell us they love, us, love it. I don't really like it. And I went to the tattoo artist to get it, and he was like, oh, well, you need to get it this big, you need to get it there. I just wanted a little picture of the queen, and he's like, you need to get this, 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 this. And I was like, uh, I don't know, and I was like, oh, shit. And I thought, I'll trust him, he's got good work and all that. So anyway, the fucker done it, and done it the way he wanted to do it, not the way I wanted to do it. And yeah, he's messed me tattoo up, so I'm not a big fan of me tattoo, uh, even though everyone else who sees it seems to love it. So if you, what, what it is, it's a picture of Queen Elizabeth with the Union Jack behind it, and then the American flag uh, underneath it, and the Queen Elizabeth's got tattoos all over her face. So I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, but, you know, what can you do? What can you do? I'm tattered up and you can't do anything about it. And I can't really get it covered up because it's that big on my shoulder. And my shoulders are fucking massive, you know. They're really, really big. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. Uh, but when I get older, you know, I'll fade and maybe I get something put over it. I don't know. That's one thing about uh, what I've been thinking about lately has been getting old. You know, I'm 33 now. I turned 33 in March and I'm starting to really... Uh, Think about life more and about learning a lot as well, learning more. You know, when I was telling my nephew who was here from England the other day, like when I was, he's, he's just turned 18 yesterday. When I was 16, I thought I knew it all. No one would tell us anything because, you know, I'm 16 now, I'm, I'm grown up, I, I know it all. Then when I got to 18, I was like, no, nah, no, I definitely knew it all. What more is it to learn? Then I got to 21, I was like, this is it. I'm fucking, I'm, I'm good, you know, I, I know I know everything, I can drink anywhere, I can travel what I do, where, where, wherever I want to go, do what I want, I'm 21 years old, I know it all. Then I got to 30 and it's like, I know nothing, you know, I know very, very little and over the past year or two, I'm, I'm learning all the time and I think everyone should be learning all the time if you, the, the, the time when you stop learning and realise uh, realizing you stop learning is the time that you're going to start going backwards. You know, you, you've got to always keep learning and learn about the things that really interest you. You don't have to learn about other things like what I don't, what, what you're not bothered about. Like now, the things that interest me is is the brain, the human brain. And if you've listened to this podcast for a while, you know that I'm always I've always been worried about the the damage that boxing's done to my brain. So I'm learning about that and about learning about brain health and nutrition, just how how good nutrition is for your for your brain. Um, and one thing I heard the other day, it's like uh, uh, de dementia is, uh, you, you don't get any sim symptoms of dementia until you've had it for like 10 or 20 years. So I could have dementia right now, you could have dementia right now, and you'll not know that until 10 or 20 years down the line. And it was, it was funny what they said. It was on a podcast. It was on Jay Ferocious podcast. It was Max, someone who was on the episode. Um, he, he said, "Now, like he said, the average life expectancy of the millenniums now, the younger kids, is ninety years old, and people get dementia. There's a, there's a one in two chance of getting dementia after you're eighty five years old. So basically, there's a one in one in two chance." that all these young kids now will get dementia. So we need to figure out ways how to, to how to, uh, not so much, well, cure it if we can, but how to, how to slow it down, how to help it. And one big thing is, is nutrition, with eating, eating, eating proper, you know? There's so many processed foods out there, just about all foods, shit now. And because of Raya Munzi, he was on, uh, the podcast a couple of episodes go, go back and listen to that one it's one of the most uh, the, the best feedback I've got off any podcast I think it was episode, episode 84 something like that Ryan Munsey so go back and listen to that episode so yeah he was the one who really helped me with my, my nutrition and, and getting getting knowledgeable on that and helped really change my life you know so I told you it was and, and talking about processed foods, how you don't know what the hell you're eating. If someone, and it says he's in one of his books, if someone give you a pill and said, here you go, eat, take this pill, you'd say, I'm not taking that, what is it? And, but with food, if you go to a supermarket, you've got no idea what's in this processed shitty food, you're just gonna, you, and you eat it, we all eat it, you know? Like, last night on my nephew's birthday, we went to a, 
a Korean restaurant. It was a Korean barbecue where they bring all the meat out. It's the first time I've ate meat that's not been organic or it's not been grass-fed for a long time because I've, I've been trying to keep on that path, eating real good, clear shit. So we're at this food and um, the next day, like I had loads of this beef and all the, the ribeye and whatever else was pork. The next day I felt like I had a hangover this morning. My wife said, you look like you've got a hangover. I said, it's off eating that food last night and I felt sick after I had it because it was probably the, the, the cheapest, shittiest food of steroided up cows and pigs and all that, you know. So we had it and I didn't feel good because my body's used to eating the good food all the time. Yeah, so like I say, I'm grown, grown old, uh, I'm learning about that. And I think that's something that we all should learn about. And it's something that we should be taught in schools, I think. I mean, the school system is something that I don't agree on right now. I think there needs to be a big shake-up in it. And I, and I think it's Mark Zuckerberg, the, the founder of Facebook. This is something that he was putting the time into before him and his wife about the studying and trying to make it more customised where the, 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 like, let's say now if, if there's an English, maths and science classes and I'm amazing at English and I'm not very good at maths or science, I'll do the same work as people who's amazing at maths and science and not the same as who's not very good at English, you know? So I think we should, they should customise it and, and work with people's strengths and if they're good at that, yeah, let's, let's get, make, make that stuff even harder and more advanced if they're not good at that. Don't give them the same stuff as someone who's amazing at that, who's holding you back. You know, you work, work on that. And as well with, um, with studying, now we've got Google, which answers questions for absolutely anything. So is it necessary to know uh, and spend a full hour on learning about something like where... Uh, something like the equator in the Earth. Yeah, we need to know about it, or something about the the Earth's tilt, or something about it might be uh, history about the Romans and Vikings. I don't know how valuable that is in everyday life. I know that since I left school, I enjoyed learning about the Romans, but there's not been nothing. I've not used it in life. I believe that we should be learning about taxes. I should think, I think a big thing that we all should be learning about in school, well, not we, but kids should be learning about in school is mental health and how to deal with it. Mental health is massive, absolutely massive now, massive. And no one knows about it, no one expects it. People think it's not normal, where I think mental health is something that is very normal. So I think the kids in school should be very aware of that. Um, Definitely, and uh, like nutrition is another one. Like I said, I'm I'm learning now. I'm 33 years old. I'm just starting to learn about the diets and and how to eat correctly. Even though I was an Olympian, you would think I would know, but no. Uh, I think that stuff in schools real big. But yeah, taxes about money, about investments, about business, and about about doing your own stuff. Because I think now kids try to follow the footsteps of the parents which their parents followed the footstep of their parents. So it's, it's kind of like doing the same shit. Um, oh, and another thing about that, that, that Google stuff, we, and our kids are doing the same shit in schools that I was doing in school before Google was a thing, you know? So now Google's out. Let's, let's change the, the, the schooling system. Um, yeah, so I think kids are following the footsteps of the parents where I, I don't think it's a good thing. I think they should be told, learn about, like, Businesses, you can do your own thing if you want to do your own thing. You can do, I wouldn't say anything you want, but what what learning? What do you want to do when you leave school? What would you really like to do? Like my nephew's over here, who I want to talk about now. He's he's over here, got in a bit trouble getting in the wrong with the wrong, wrong crowd back in England, in the north of England. And uh, my sister, who's an amazing mother, sent him over here for the to come stay with me and show them what I'm doing. And I just feel like I'm trying to learn them as much as I can and, and teach them as much as I can about, about, about life, really, about what he can, can and can't do. And I had a conversation with him yesterday where he was talking about, I was talking about being, getting into personal training and fitness because he's had 30 odd amateur fights. He was a boxer, he's been doing boxing since he was 10 years old. That's kind of his education. He never done much in school. But he's, he's really good at boxing. He can even teach boxing good. 
And we're talking about um, if, if you went and worked at a gym. And he's like, well, if I worked at a gym, I would get crap money. But if I worked in a call centre, I could get like a grand a month or, or more than a grand a month. And I'm like, yeah, but you're working in a call centre. In one year's time, you're still going to be getting a grand a month. But if you went in a gym, and yeah, you might be getting 200, 300 pound a month. But in one year's time, you might be getting two grand a month. And you're doing something that you really enjoy. Sitting answering a phone all day to people who don't really want to be on the phone to you, it, it's not a very satisfying job. Yeah, the money might be great straight up, but you're not going to be doing something you enjoy doing. And I think that's something that kids should be taught in schools because... Yeah, it's down to the parents to teach. I think it's down to parents to teach that, but parents don't know that either. Parents don't know the world that's out there. I'm not saying these parents doesn't, because they support them with whatever he wants to do, but like I'm saying parents in general, it's, we, we don't, we don't like, know that, uh, well, a lot of parents don't know that kids can do what they want, and I think the number one thing is happiness. I think we've all, well, a lot of people have heard the, the phrase like, if you go into a job doing it just for the money, you know, you're not going to enjoy it. But go into a job doing it because you love it, and then the money will come. And it's and it's like, if you go into a job just doing it for the money, you're not going to do more than is expected of you. But if you go into a job that you love, you're going to go above and beyond, and you're going to get better job satisfaction. If you go above and beyond, you're going to end up being very, very successful in whatever you do. Go above and beyond in whatever you do and you will be successful. Like, when me and Kevin started Boxing Burn, we were doing it for donations only at the boot camp in Santa Monica Beach. Doing it for free. We weren't getting paid anything, but we loved it. And now look what's happened. We, we own two gyms that's doing seven figures a year, and we never thought that this would have happened, but it's happening because we love it. And we've been around now for six years. We were the top of the game in the boxing fitness industry in the world, you know, and I'm very proud I see that, and I'm very com confident in seeing that, that we're the, we're the best in the world at what we do. Um, and it, it hasn't been hard, it's been easy. Do you know why it's been easy? Because we love it. And if you're doing something that you love, it's easy. Yeah, there's been hard mornings and hard days and dealing with people and, well, we've had some of our top trainers, we've left or we've had to fire them. Yeah, that's hard, and that's that, that's the things that get you down. But, I, I mean, it's easy. Maybe it's because I've been boxing and the, the, living the life of a professional boxer, a professional athlete, that, that's tough. But this shit is, is, is real easy. And I think, yeah, I think that's a big thing that kids should be learnt and, and taught about what they want to do with their lives is, yeah, you want to do that, do that. Do what makes you happy. And I, I might be wrong, but I don't think that's happening uh, enough I think it should be happening more and more. Look at this, me talking non-stop like this. And like I see, I've not done a, a podcast for a long time. Uh, uh, one of the things that me and Glenn, we started doing it when we were, uh, we had a few glasses of wine on, on the aeroplane. I should see a few. We had loads of glasses of wine on the aeroplane. We were flying back from, I think, Florida. And Glenn's, come on, let's do a podcast. Let's do a podcast. Let's do a podcast. I'm saying, Glenn, we can't do a podcast on an aeroplane. It's loud as fuck. We're not, the, the quality's going to be crap. And he said, no, come on, let's do a podcast. I'm saying, no, we're not doing a podcast on the airplane. We can't. And uh, I said, tell you what we'll do, though. Let's do some podcast training. And he's like, what, you talk, what do you mean? And I got this idea. I went, let's, let's talk. Let's just talk. You've got to talk for 90 seconds nonstop. And then I'll talk for 90 seconds nonstop. He's like, all right. I went, all right, stop watch, go. Then Glenn just starts talking for 90 seconds on stop as soon as he stops I've got to talk as soon as I stop he's got to talk and we kept we've done that for about half an hour you know <laughs> and I think that that really helped that really uh, helped with podcasting it. and it, it, it's kind of like a, a sort of training you know you, you, you're you training you're training your mind you're training your your vocabulary uh, so that that helped and another thing that we've done when we are in Vegas as well again after a few bevies a few glasses of wine uh it was, I think it was my idea. I said to Glenn, Glenn, I bet you can't go and talk to a stranger for a minute nonstop. I was like, I can't, I can't. And, you know, so Glenn went up to a stranger and just started talking to this, this old woman. I think she was about 60, 
for like a minute and a half non-stop just talking shit and he wasn't allowed to ask her questions you know uh, she wasn't allowed to speak and <laughs> and I think that, that, that definitely helps so that's something that's a task that you can do go and talk to a stranger for a minute and a half without stopping that will help you in everyday life and as well it'll help you be sociable you know because we're all in a world now where we're all unsociable like, like I don't know I think we really are and the older generation kind of is setting the way for us like my wife's mother-in-law who's here she'll talk to anyone about everything and she's like oh that's a nice dress or oh I like your hair and it gets conversations going but with our generation and the younger generation if my nephew who was 18 went up to some guy and said hey mate I like your jacket where'd you get that from he'd be thinking why the hell is he asking that because I think that's the way the, the world is going so yes that's your task go up to someone and ask them questions no go up to someone don't ask them questions and try and talk to them for a minute and a half and see how hard that is it is hard uh, yeah so I've, the only times I've done that is after a few drinks and if you follow me or listen to this regularly you know last year in 2017 I had one full year off alcohol and it was really good the benefits were massive I uh, I'd done so much in work, so much in business, so much with the podcast, and uh, it, it was it was real good. But the only hard thing was coming back down to mental health. Was the, the, the stress at night about thinking about work, I think about this, about trainers, about whatever it might be. It used to get tough, and it used to get hard for us to sleep. Uh, so a glass of wine, I think, is has been beneficial to me since then. So yeah. There's lots of benefits to not drinking, but as well, the, I think there's benefits to it. And I've been, le- like I say, learning all the time. And I'm learning that uh, a glass of wine at night is a glass of red, dry, French is good for you. There's a company called, oh, what's it called? Uh, oh, I can't think of this wine company where they deliver it each month. And I was on that where uh, you pay, like I think it's like $170 a month and they deliver you six bottles of wine, but it's all organic. It's all, uh, got to all that. I think it's, Antioxidants being taken out of it. Dry farm wines, that's it. Dry farm wines. And uh, yeah, I, I was, I, so I started drinking that at the beginning of the year, but now uh, I, I just drink all sorts of shit. No, I, don't know. I try and keep it clean. Like I see, I'm on this, this health kick where it's organic and it's, it's all good and proper. And another thing I've been doing to learn is read. I've never read a book in my life. I've never finished a book, an adult book in my life, but now I'm really starting to read. and the reason why or the reason the way that I found out that reading is so good for you was a tweet at Joe Rogan he tweeted out a a link to a a blog that someone wrote on reading for the brain how it really helps your brain and I never really thought about about it like that uh, until I read this blog and in the blog it says about your when you're reading a, a, a fiction novel or whatever your imagination uh, kicks in and that really helps you be. I've not read that yet. The, the only book that I'm reading now and I'm, I'm quite a way through is Aubrey Marcus's Own the Day. And that's really good. I'm learning a lot from that. Like he says in his book about how the little things in life, the little decisions that you make in life can really make a huge impact. For instance, in the morning, if you wake up and you have your cereal normally but this morning you wake up and you have something like something with avocado in a high fat something with high fat with more energy in now when a a high sugar cereal diet when the high sugar from the cereal uh, kicks it wears off you're going to be uh, a bit tired so if you're a bit tired of of not having the right nutrition you're uh, and, and you're thinking should i go to the gym or not your decision's going to be, no, nah, I'm not going to deal with the gym because I'm tired. But if you've had the ha- av- let's say avocado with a high-fat breakfast and you've got more energy, and then it's, shall I go to the gym? Yes, I'm going to go to the gym. Now, because you've made that decision, because of the avocado, which, come on, that makes sense. That's what will happen. Now you go to the gym, you get a workout. I'm not going to go into the benefits of working out. We all know there's so many benefits to working out. Now you've had your workout. Now you're going to go home. You're going to have more energy. You might have better sex, 
You might uh, make a better decision about the next day. But what, you're going, what you are going to do, you're going to sleep better at night. And if you sleep better at night, then you're going to wake up feeling better the next day. So just because you had that avocado rather than your sugary, shitty cereal, what we normally have, you know, you've, that, that decision's changed your life. And there's so much stuff in, the, in that book what, what's really beneficial, and, and that's one that it talks about um, the benefits of cold showers, like I've just mentioned before, and the benefits of all sorts, really. And I'm learning about... Uh, about high fat diets, like I told you, Ryan Munsey told me about them, and I learned a lot from that. But I'm, this is breaking it down a little bit more. Like in the 20th century, I read that in the 20th century, there was two doctors, nutrition scientists, working on what was causing um, heart disease. One was working on saturated fats, and one was working on sugar, and the both, uh, one was saying it's saturated fats that's doing it, and one was saying it's sugar that's doing it. The one that's worked on saturated fat, he's the one that won, right? So then what people started doing, because this went worldwide, is they start cutting fat out of the diet, and when you're cutting fat out of your diet, out, out, sorry, out of the food, start cutting fat out, out of the food, and they'll start replacing them fats with sugars, right? And now it's been proven that sugar's the thing that's causing... Um, heart disease and, and diabetes and all these other stupid sh things that's happening. That's Like sugar's the devil, not saturated fat. Well, really saturated fat, well, well, fat is good for you. Good fats is good for you. Like the avocados and nuts and even grass-fed butter, all that, even bacon, that, 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 stuff's, that stuff's good for you. That's going to give you the energy. Um, so, yeah, that's, a, that's something else I'm... I'm really enjoying doing, reading and learning new stuff. And even even with that there, like I've just spoken about a little bit, it's something that I'm not really comfortable talking about or advising because I don't know enough about it yet. I'm just knowing what I'm reading from these books. And it's, uh, yeah, it's, 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 gone, it's gone really well. And as well, I'm working a lot on social media marketing. I've spoken about this before, that <clears throat> we're going to Australia, the UK, San Jose uh, in a couple of weeks. And I'm doing all the marketing promote, promotions work for this Boxing Run Academy, our education program where we teach people how to teach boxing. Uh, if you want to sign up for that, by the way, use Boxing Life 18 and you will save $100 off that. So I'm working in a lot on Facebook ads and I want to learn more about that, about the, the sales funnels and all that. Cause it's something that I'm really interested in, like I said before, if you're really interested in learning about it. And that's what I'm doing. So I put on Instagram that I'm, I want to got a few question and answers just, a, just an hour or so ago, and I wanted to see if anyone had any questions for us about anything. I'm about to read them out right now. Let me see. Um, I put on there as well about voice notes, if anyone wants to leave a voice one. But I just done it like an hour, hour ago, so I never got very many. So the first question is, Hi, Tony. This is off back ha 27 B-A-K-E. H A underscore 27. Hi, Tony. Is it too late for a 24-year-old guy to be a professional boxer slash MMA fighter? Thanks. Is it too late? It's not too late. It, it depends, I mean, for you to start from scratch and become one. But I think there, mate, you've put... I'm, I'm guessing this is for yourself. You want to become a professional boxer or an MMA fighter. First thing you need to do is decide which one you want to be, you know, because the, the two different sports... And is it is it too late? I wouldn't advise it. I really wouldn't. You know, if if you want to start fresh and start fighting and start start training at 24 years old, I wouldn't. I mean, you've got to think what's the end goal with that. Are you going to be world champion? Chances are not. Are you going to be a punch in the head a lot? Yes, you are. Uh, so are you going to make much money? Chances are not because there's very few people make money from boxing. So I hope that answers your question. I mean, that's my advice. You know, I might be totally wrong. You might be super talented. Uh, you might be passionate about it. You might want to do it. Try it, you know. All you can do is go to the gym, try it, speak to a, a coach, see what he thinks, and yeah, and, and see where you go from there. Next question is from official Jimmy Martinez. This is on Instagram. Uh, hello, Tony. I have a question about your boxing course. Oh, so this is about the Boxing Academy, so let's ignore that. Next question is about 
Boxing King from Boxing King underscore media. This is a great channel on Instagram. This is someone I recommend you go and follow, Boxing King underscore media. They do all sorts of boxing highlight videos and all that if you're into boxing. Question is, Tony, I've got a question for you. There's many variations of pad work. Somewhere the fighter seems to do all the work. Somewhere the trainer meets the fighter more than halfway. You have the mirror... You have the Mayweather pad work, the Freddie Roach pad work, etc. If you're starting as a new trainer, how do you know what's best to use for a coach or what's right? Has research been done into the science of pad work to show which style is the most realistic or useful for a fighter? Hope this makes sense. Great question. And we see this all the time on Instagram where, I mean, if you're into boxing, you're watching boxing stuff, is where people do this fancy mitt work. And I, for me, it's something that I, I'm not a fan of at all. It's... To the, I think to the uneducated eye, even the me with me with the stuff, to the uneducated eye, it might look good. To to me, and I'd say in 95% of most fighters, it looks terrible. It looks shite. It's because the reason being is because it's unrealistic. If I'm and back to your question, if I'm a, if I'm a new trainer and I'm starting out, what sort of pad work should I do? Do realistic pad work. Think about what's is it realistic? Are, are you doing catching real punches? Would this happen in a fight? Would this be a, a fight-specific thing? Like, when I'm doing pad work with people, I'll work on the jab, the one-two, the jab, jab, two, the one-two hook, one-two hook the body, a lean back, uh, maybe a slip. But even even then, uh, you know, with the slips and that, you want I want to be realistic all the time, like a fight-specific thing. Uh, if, you're, if you're doing the one-two, slip, slip, roll, two, hook, two, lean back, two, Slip, slip, or whatever it might be, uppercut catch, blah 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 blah. It's like, is someone really going to throw a fifty punch combination in a fight? No, they're not. That's if you're teaching it for boxing. If you're teaching it for fitness, you know, clients like it. Clients like it. They make makes them feel good. I say it's for the uneducated eye. It may feel good, but if you're a trainer starting out, let's get the basics right before you start doing the fancy shit. And I, I know a good way to get the basics right is by coming to the Boxing Burn Academy wherever we are around the world. Or you've got an online course now, so boxingburnacademy.com. You've got the online course. Use Boxing Life 18 code and you'll save $100. So I hope that answers your question. Next question is from F underscore Gonzo 34. I have a serious question. And yes, some people say there's no chance if you start trying to box. No chance. If you start trying to box, now to go professional, you're too old. I'm actually 23, going on 24. Oh, this is a question I've just answered. What about that? This year, I'm seriously thinking about giving boxing a run for its money. And I am <clears throat> two and three years, my goal become a pro or amateur champion or on Olympic stage. So I know I can make it. There's, but my concerns are coaches, trainers, and the rest make boxing happen. Um, any suggestions, connections? Thanks, brother. Again, like I said on the other, que on the, on the other question, you know, I would, that's something I would, I would I really think about before you give it a go. Do it for, do it for fitness. I don't know, have you sparred yet? Have you been punched in the face yet? Because like Mike, Mike Tyson says, uh, everyone wants to, it's a lot of fun to get punched in the face. What is it? It's something like that. I can't remember what it is. But yeah, I mean, it is until you get punched in the face. So I would definitely, um, I would definitely, Give it a give it a go and get in the ring and get punched in the face before you decide it. Next question by from Luke Rune X E. Luke R O O N X Y. Sorry, I can't pronounce that. With the sea of personal training certifications you can get out there, who would you recommend to get qualified with? I'm guessing uh, also looking forward to seeing you in Sheffield in my hometown. Uh, great mate I look forward to meeting you Luke uh, look forward to working with you and yeah the Boxing Man Academy is definitely a certification course that I would recommend but yeah, I'm sure you're talking about the other sort of certification courses now this is a this is a a thing what I believe in and it's I don't know if you should take my advice on this or not but like I, I feel like the only the, the biggest benefit of getting certifications from big companies like NASAM in America or ES or ISSE, I don't know, I don't know what they are in the UK, I know you're from the UK, is to get jobs in in, uh, in gyms. 
There's a lot of certification courses there that ask you what well, you've got to learn about bones and about muscles and about... Um, I'm talking about muscles, like the muscles in your feet and all that, and it's like, do you really need that? I've got no idea about that, and most people don't, but the, the teacher this stuff, I don't know, maybe it's just so you can, it's just, just, just so you, it shows that you, you're good at learning, but I don't think most of the stuff that you learn, the autonomy stuff, is necessary in personal training. You might, I guess you probably need this stuff if you want to get a job in a gym, but because it shows the gym that you you can you dedicated and you and you want to be um, you you want to be a trainer, but the trainers like from what we've got Glenn the co-host on this show, he's one of the best personal trainers out there. He's absolutely amazing. He hasn't got one well, has he? He's, he's done a few courses like uh, TRX and things, but he's all about learning himself, like going out there and and, and learning. He finding course like a battle a battle rope course. If you had a battle rope certification, chances are you're not going to get a job in a gym, but you're going to learn a shit ton. It's about what you, I think with that stuff, it's about what you learn and what what you benefit from, like the, the skills. Like if you come, like the Boxing Burn Academy, you've got the skills to teach someone how to box. That's um, that's big and, and it's attractive, I think, for a personal trainer, for a, for a client. It's attractive that, oh, this guy knows how to teach someone how to box. If you know someone about battle ropes, um, I'd, I, would, I would do, I would do, I advise lots of different courses like the TRX, the battle ropes, the kettlebells, uh, them sort of things. But like I said, they might not necessarily get you jobs in in gyms, but but you will learn a shit ton from them as well as you can learn a lot of stuff on YouTube from videos and and all that. And I know like Glenn and Stephen, they learn a lot a lot from them, from videos and stuff. Uh, let me see. Next question is from I underscore versus dot I. It's an interesting uh, Instagram name. Um, how do you train boxing endurance? So that's a massive question. You know, how do you train boxing endurance? For one, box. You've got to keep boxing. Box as much as you can. And I talked to my client about this before. Like, there's no better way to get fit in boxing than actually sparring. You've got to do as much sparring as you can. If you're going to be fighting, you know, the you can hit the bags all day, you can hit the pads all day, but without the actual sparring, that's going to really help uh, your endurance and your fitness and all that stuff. So, yeah, sparring training, realistic training is is uh, the, the the realistic stuff is the is the best stuff. So that's the that's a few questions. I only posted an hour ago, so I'll I'll do more questions in the future. Uh, and yeah, well, I think with with the, the 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 boxing stuff. I mean, you would think like that's common sense with with the boxing. You know, get the more, the most sparring in you can, and uh, the, you would think eating uh, like I said before, like grass fed stuff rather than processed stuff was common sense as well. But it's not, and it's, we're uneducated on that stuff. And talking about common sense. Uh, forget about the boxing and nutrition, like common sense in general, like common common sense, like how to change a light bulb or how to do something like turn a computer on, is so hard these days to find someone with common sense. It's it's one of the most uncommon things. Maybe it's because I'm in LA and people out here, a lot of people out here as actors and all that. But trying to find common sense is tough. And every time I put a job application out, not for a, a, a trainer or anything like that, but like for a personal assistant or for help with the Boxing Moon Academy, I put that at the top. Must have common sense, right? But the only thing about, the only thing about putting that at the top is if they haven't got common sense, they're going to be that daft that don't know that they haven't got common sense. Anyway, so I'm going to get off now. Like I said, I'm going to take my wife out tonight to celebrate a promotion at work. I hope you enjoyed this solo podcast. Please uh, leave this show a a review on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, wherever the hell you're listening to it. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'm starting to put boxing-related stuff on YouTube now. Uh, I've, if you've noticed, like my Instagram is kind of uh, you probably. Well, I'm seeing if you've noticed, like people notice this shit. But like my Instagram's blew up lately, and I'm I'm going uh, I'm going very heavy in a boxing content on there because I figured out that my my. F- uh, followers love the boxing education stuff so I'm putting that on there and it's going up and 
like I say, I'm learning all the time and I'm, I'm learning about social media and how to use social media to benefit business. I'm, I love business. And it's helping. So YouTube as well is another thing I'm, I'm on. So I, I love YouTube and I love posting videos. I love creating content. That's why I'm sitting here. It's Sunday at night, 6 p.m. And uh, by myself in the gym with my shirt off because I love creating content. So yeah, give me your feedback. If you listen to this this far, use Boxing Life 18 for a code for the Boxing Run Academy. Another thing that I do on Instagram as well, I reply to every single, every single direct message I get. And I get a shit ton now, uh, you know, just because I'm a nice person. And I like to socialize and network and build a massive, massive, massive community. Thank you for listening to the Boxing Life podcast. You made it to the end of this solo episode. If you did make it to the end of this solo episode, please uh, send me a DM on Instagram and tell me this, and I'll be impressed. All right, until next time, I'll see you later.